roots there, but I am a time traveler. Yeah, you heard right. I am a time traveler. But not like that, no. And not like that either. But I am a time traveler. I can prove it to you using three sentences. You want to hear? They are, one, I live in the future. Two, I'm haunted by the past. And three, I've long since forgotten how to return to the present. OK, so those three sentences probably did nothing to help your confusion. So just hold on a bit. I promise to explain more. So let's start by talking about my frenemy. I know what you're thinking. Uh, she's a teenage girl. Of course, she's going to change her clothes, her mind, her friends every single three seconds. And I'm not going to argue with that. I'm really not, because it's half true. But I believe that my frenemy is just a bit interesting. Why? Because it's time. OK, no, there is no one named time. But even if there is, that's not what I mean. When I say time, I literally mean like the noun in the English dictionary, the fourth dimension, etc. So I believe that I both love and hate time with a passion. I also need it, which is what makes it complicated. So I think I have this kind of complicated relationship with all three parts of time, that is with the past, the future, and the present. But the present in particular gets on my nerves. You know why? Because I don't know how to keep track of the present. I don't know how to contain it. Because if you just think about it, like really think about it, how exactly do we measure the present? All right, so this is a pretty redundant answer, but we don't. No, we don't measure the present. And that de no is exactly why I've chosen to come here to speak today. So to put it metaphorically, the present is kind of like that um, character on that TV crime drama who's there for about half a season and then suddenly leaves. And then you miss them, but it's kind of your fault you didn't notice them before. It's that sort of dynamic. Annoying, right? So, but to move on in all seriousness, because I have to, I'm here to talk about why the present is important, simply put. And of course, after countless hours of research and sleepless nights, we have come up with the perfect mixture of teenage angst and insight. And I hope you take these ideas with a little bit of consideration. All right, so first, memories. I have a bunch of them, probably more than I would like, and I know you do too. You and I, we've accumulated memories ever since we were about two or three years old. That's good memories, bad memories, emphasis on the cringy ones. And memories in our lives, they play this role of helping us let's say, tell stories, help us reinforce regrets, and ultimately learn from mistakes in the past. But if you were to look at memories, like the concept of memories, subjectively, we notice that they're not actually that great. Now, it's not so much the fact that we can't remember every single thing that's ever happened to us, because that would be annoying and a burden, but it's more so that we remember things in a low definition. So this is kind of like, this is kind of like a metaphor again. So it's like time or memories act like a translucent film spread over a lens when I'm trying to watch a home video. Like I'll see the event, the people, the smile, but never crystal clear like I did before. Right? So on a more personal note, I spent summer 2015 in New York, and I left it there my summer when I boarded the plane back to Vancouver. So that might sound a bit too poetic and dramatic, but I assure you, that's pretty much what happened. So my summer program was designed to cultivate independence by throwing us into a big, dark, bright city and have us spend for ourselves. But that's not really what I focused on, no. See, my program also incorporated these things called university visits, and yes, to the Ivies that are completely out of my league, and that was what influenced me. So, the night before departure, my friends and I, my new friends and I, we camped underneath stars, and stupidly, like teenagers, we tried to count them. See, I was counting too, but not the stars, no. 
I was counting the miracles I needed in order to be even considered by an eye, which I thought were just as numerous as there were stars in the sky. But see, that was a trend. I was in, probably, the busiest, the most alive city in the entire world, and Times Square to me was but a distraction. And Central Park was merely a backyard for pacers. And when goodbye came, it didn't really come until I was sitting alone, because I was the last person to leave, with a plane ticket in one hand and a suitcase in one hand, the other hand, trying to figure out what had gone on for the past month or so, and everything came back. But like a documentary, one that I was watching and I felt like I had an experience, even though, paradoxically, I was the main character. So my poetic take on this is that once the 6.57 p.m. sunset turns into the 6.58 p.m. sunset, the previous one is gone. And the exact pigments that have scattered across the sky in some unsystematic pattern at 6.57 would be gone as well. And we would never see it again. So the present is important because it is precious like the first snowflake of winter. When it hits the ground, and it melts. No other snowflake will take its place. No snowflake this year, no snowflake last year, no snowflake in the next 10 years. That's why we should step back and take pleasure in watching it down. So the second reason why I believe the present is important, because every present could possibly be our last, kind of like an upgraded YOLO. So a human nature of ours is to not appreciate something until it is taken away from us. I mean, this is applied almost every day, everywhere. But the present in this very way has always been handed to us as if it'll never run out, like homework. It's piling and piling and piling, and sometimes we have to go through it like it's a chore. But actually, how many presents do we really have? So as shown in the video, the time we have in jelly beans, we don't really have that much time. See, all of the jelly beans spread out across over there, over there, is an average person's life. 28,834 jelly beans, or one jelly bean a day. You eat one jelly bean a day. But the difference between jelly beans and life, besides the fact that one's candy and one's life, is that we don't really know how many jelly beans are left in the jar. We don't know how many days we have left, do we? See, there could be. You can reach your hand into the jar and feel 10,000 more. Or there could be just another one. See, there could also be impediments. Maybe one day, time, that little rascal, could accidentally knock down our jar, spilling all of our jelly beans onto the ground and having them pass the five second rule so we can't eat them anymore. But in life, that spilling is an accident on the freeway. And you know, maybe, just maybe, one day we'll out of the blue develop a cavity and never be able to eat another jelly bean in comfort again. Well, that cavity in life is a terminal illness. And you know what? There's gonna be days where jelly beans are gonna taste bitter. Your jelly bean is gonna taste bitter and you're gonna wanna stop eating, but you can't knowing the fact that the jelly bean that you never took the initiative to eat might have just been the sweetest, the best jelly bean you would have ever tasted in your entire life. See? The present is important because it is fragile. So the ra last reason why the present is important and the most important reason is because really, really, the present is all that we, as human beings, can control. So let's start off with a question. So what exactly are we planning for? Say you spend every single minute of your life planning for something that has to happen, and when that specific thing happens, you are immediately planning for the next big thing in your life. So the actual question in this context is, when will this planning end? So that's a trick question, because it doesn't end. No, it doesn't end until you end, and that's pretty depressing, isn't it? So try and think about it this way. <laughs> Your future is a chalk line you drew, way out in the distance, and 
Your plan is to walk on that line and that line only because it leads you to the future you want to go to and how to get there. But you know, as you're walking on the line, somewhere down in the front that you can't see, a rain cloud's going to pass over and there's going to be a thunderstorm. Little kids from the neighborhood are going to trample over your line and once you reach a point at that line where it starts to fade, do you stop walking? Do you turn around? and leave? No, there's an easier way, I promise you. You simply reach into your pocket and take out that piece of chalk that you almost forgot you had, that power, and you bend down and you draw your future as you go, seeing there's no point in drawing it so far. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, you know, and honestly, I get it. I really do. We all want to do amazing things. We all want to be amazing people. And some people, like me, blindly strive towards perfection. When I was a kid, I wanted to be special. I'm still a kid, and I still do want to be special. It was, and I'm not afraid to admit, it's still my dream. But you know, I wanted to do things like marry Percy Jackson and get accepted into Hogwarts and become a grace, like things along like that. And more recently, I wanted to just not be ordinary. You know, as I grew older, I realized that, you know, we don't get to choose whether or not we're special. That our lives are more or less set the moment we're born. That our physical and mental dispositions are based on factors that are completely out of our control, like our family, like our birthplace, like luck. And that really broke my heart. You know, it really did. You know, as I grew even older, like more recently, my thinking, strangely enough, went backwards. And what I mean by that is I realized, you know, we, you know, we do get some choice in how we want to live. We do get some control. And how? I think you know the answer. It's by the present. See, every single decision we make in the present will tweak our past in a way. Every single yes, no, maybe so is going to paint our future, except we don't know what that's going to look like. Right? And in that moment, we were infinite. It's not just a cliche line from a book that was overused and then gotten tired of, but it's actually a pretty good representation of the idea I'm trying to bring here today. That if we say, in that moment, we were infinite, we control the present. We could have done this and this. It's the same as saying that right now, in this very moment, this very, very moment that's passing, you're still infinite. You can still control the present. You still own the present. You can still change whatever you want to change, whether that be your life or your dream or your perfection, profession, things like that. And you know, if the future is vast and unpredictable and the past is gone and you can't change it anymore and the present is right here, right here, in your hands. Which one are you going to grab onto? So why did I speak to you for about eight minutes? Okay. Well, similar to my reason, my relationship with time, it's complicated. But it doesn't mean I came here without reason. See, maybe it's because I wanted to remind both you and me that we're actually pretty lucky to have this control over the present, to have this power. I know for a fact that my great-grandmother, who is from a nameless, poor countryside of China that, who had her feet bound so much that she couldn't walk more than 10 meters by herself without tripping and falling, that she didn't have this opportunity because the circumstances didn't allow it. You know? And that because we do have this opportunity, this choice, that we should take advantage of it while we can. And the second reason, maybe, just maybe, I wanted to help soothe the feeling of hopelessness, that ugly feeling of sadness when our futures don't play out exactly how we want them to be, which is 99% of the time because time is annoying. And lastly, maybe again, I wanted to remind you that it's okay to give yourself a little time off every so often, right? We live in a society where we're expected to be productive, to keep on improving, to be better and better, better than everyone all the time. But this makes us lose ourselves, right? Because we're focusing 
on what's non-existent, that we can't control, rather than what we can. And you know, honestly, however you wish to interpret my speech, I have one last question. Yes, last one, I promise. And that is, what exactly is the present? Well, you know, however you wish to answer this question, I mean, you can all have your own answers. It's not fixed. The way from the way I see it, it's precious, it's fragile, and it's hard. And now that my speech has come to an end, like I'm explicitly telling you, it's become a memory, like the ones that I said I didn't like too much. But I hope, my one hope, is that this memory will be the memory that'll stop you from getting onto that time machine.